Hi, I'm Jamie Clayton, and for my senior project, I want to teach you how to tie a Griffiths knot and a parachute fly. The reason why I wanted to learn how to tie flies was because at a very young age, I learned to love fishing. I did not get caught up into fly fishing until I was about 10 years old. Since then, I've learned how much fly fishing costs. Each fly can cost anywhere from $2 to $10 a piece. And when I go fishing, I end up losing about 12 flies each time. So each fishing trip can be very, very expensive. I also want to take the opportunity to show my passion to my peers and my fellow friends. We're going to start with the Griffiths knot. So this right here is the Griffiths knot, and now I want to show you how to tie the Griffiths knot. The first thing you're going to want to do is put the hook on the vise. You always want to put the hook with the eyelet facing out and the barb of the hook inside of the vise. This is a basic bobbin. What the bobbin does is it holds your string while you're tying the fly. The first step is to take the thread and hold it with one hand and wrap slightly forward to the eyelet. And then you wrap back towards the tail end of the fly. When you get to the end of the fly, you're gonna wanna take your scissors or knife and cut the remaining piece of the thread off. The first material that you're going to tie on is the peacock curl. This is the underlying feathers of the peacock. You're going to want to grab two of the individual little feathers and clip the end of the feather off. You're going to want to tie the peacock curl onto the back of the fly. To tie on the peacock curl, you're going to place the two feathers in your hand and place it at the back of the fly down the back of the vise. You're going to tie on the peacock curl you're going to wrap it around the eyelet and the hook about 20 times to make sure it's securely fastened. The next step is to pick a quail feather. The feather you want to pick is a long feather that is thin but also has a lot of bristles. But before you tie the feather on, you're going to have to prep the feather. You want to go to take your knife or scissors and cut the feather in half. This process is to remove the small Un inconsistent feathers. When you tie on the feather, you're going to want to wrap the thread around 10 times. Make sure that the feather is securely fastened down. When you, you're going to continue wrapping towards the eyelet. You want to leave your thread hanging near the eyelet. You're going to take your peacock curl and wrap it around the body of the hook as tightly as you can to the very front. And then you're going to take your thread and tie off the peacock curl at the eyelet. The next step is to take the feather and spin it around just like you did with the peacock curl all the way to the front. You're going to wrap it around as tightly as you can and as densely as you can. So you're trying to get as many of the little feathers hanging off as you can to give the fly a body. Once you reach the eyelet of the fly, you're going to take your bobbin and again tie off the feather. After you tie off the feather, you want to add a couple more spins and make sure that is securely fashioned. Cut off the remaining pieces of the feather and the peacock curl. The final step is to tie the thread into a couple of knots at the eyelet. You're going to want to tie it into knots about three or four times to make sure it's securely fastened. The only thing left to do is to cut the thread. If you want, at the very end, you can cut the hackle, which is the feather wrapped around the fly, to the desired length that you want it. The next fly that we're going to tie is the Adam's Parachute Fly. We are going to tie a green variant of this fly. The first thing you want to do is put the hook in the vise and make sure the eyelet is facing out and the barb of the hook is inside the vise. You're going to want to take your bobbin and change the thread to green to match the pattern of the fly. This is very easy to do. You just pull the thread out and unpop the thread from the bobbin and place the green one in. Once again, you're going to start at the back of the fly and wrap quickly to the top of the fly. And then you're going to do the exact same thing and wrap it back down to the back of the fly and cut off the excess. And then you're going to slowly have to build up a body on the fly. The reason why I had to build up a body on this fly is because the thread was a lot smaller than the black thread. The next step is to pick out a green quail feather. The type of feather you're looking for, again, is a long, slender feather, but that is very dense. Also with this fly, you're going to cut the feather in half. But 
You're also going to cut off the very tip and save the tip of the feather for later. The next step is to tie on the larger feather. This is a little bit different than the Griffith snat. You're going to tie it on at the very front of the fly, leaving it hanging off the back. Then you're going to tie the smaller feather at the very back of the fly, mimicking a tail. The next step is to pick your dubbing. Dubbing is a very soft synthetic material. You're going to want to pull apart the dubbing and make sure it's prepped to tie onto the fly. You're going to slowly wrap the dubbing around the middle of the hook between the two feathers. This is going to give the fly a body. You see at first it gives a very messy appearance, but then you're going to take your green thread and wrap it around and kind of hold down the dubbing. Make sure the dubbing is mostly smooth, but is still big enough to make the fly look big. You're going to want to take the excess of the dubbing that has not been tied down by the thread and cut it off. The next step is to give your fly a wing-like appearance in the front. Before you wrap the feather around the head, you're going to want to move the thread to the very edge of the eyelet. The next step is to wrap the feather around the body of the fly to the eyelet. Once you get near the eyelet, you're going to want to tie off the feather. You're going to want to wrap the thread around the eyelet about six times. The third to last step is to tie down the knots onto the fly. You're going to want to tie about six knots at the top of the fly near the eyelet to make sure that the material is fastened down onto the body. And then all you have to do is cut off the remaining feathers and there you go. You have the Adam's parachute fly. And if you want at the end you can adjust the length of the feathers at the front to give the head a different size and different appearance. I hope this was informative and helpful on teaching you how to tie flies and I hope to see you one day out on the river.